Welcome my political friends of the interwebs. Today I'm going to be playing Mythbuster. That's right, today I'm going to bust a myth about green energy and why we have not thoroughly embraced it in this country, in the United States of America. And so just bear with me here. I, I, I first I want to say that for me, it's all common sense. But you know, I realize that we've had so many years of indoctrination in our public education that well, to be honest with you, one of the biggest victims of this indoctrination is common sense. And that's why common sense is, well, not very common, truthfully. Now, I'm not trying to insult anybody here because a lot of the things that you believe are what you believe because of the fact that you're, you've most likely been victimized by public education. Sad but true. Victimized by the teachers' unions. Sad but true. It is what it is. And just recently... I'm sure you'd have to be living under a rock if you hadn't heard the audio uh, captured in a high school classroom where a teacher <laughs> was telling her students, well, first of all, you couldn't say anything about Barack Obama, not in her classroom, and also telling her students that George Bush was having people arrested that said anything bad about him when he was president. I mean, it, you know, the <laughs> It, these are the teachers unions. I'm you know, just going to throw that out there. So I'm not bagging on any particular person who's made comments on any of my videos regarding um, fossil fuels because I understand. I mean, I really do. It, and, and I'm very sympathetic to, you know, to the unfortunate situation as it is. So let me get to the myth. Years ago, Al Gore, I remember seeing this, in fact, I watched a, a, a speech by him. Now, this is back when he was still vice president. But years ago, he had basically said flat out that the only reason that the United States has not and will not embrace uh, green technology was because uh, of fossil fuels, because, because we had this love affair with cheap, abundant fossil fuels. And that's the thing I, I want everybody to understand uh, that's very, very important. In the United States, we are blessed, and I mean blessed by the Lord. We are blessed with an abundance of fossil fuels. We have coal. We have, a, a, we have an unbelievable amount. We are the Saudi Arabia of coal. We have more oil than we can even imagine. We just need to have the political will to go after it. And we have a tremendous, we have an ocean of natural gas, an ocean of it. It's, it's amazing how blessed we are. And the, 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 the abundance of cheap fossil fuels is probably the number one reason that we went to the, we were able to get to the moon. We are literally, the United States of America, the, we are literally the greatest civilization that has ever inhabited this planet, the planet Earth. And the reason for that is, in my opinion, because we have all these fossil fuels I mean, literally. We were able to make steel during the, the, the uh, Industrial Revolution. Um, we, we, were, we were able to uh, produce our own fuels. We just, an American ingenuity. I mean, it's just amazing what we were capable of doing with our natural resources. Now, unfortunately, that seems like a bygone era, and things have definitely changed for the worse, and we are sliding rapidly from being the greatest country, and I don't know where we're going to stop, you know. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But the myth basically is that because of our, our reliance or our love affair with fossil fuels, we're not willing to put the money into the research and development, and we're not willing to take the, the hit, shall we say, I guess the, 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 the pain of becoming um, you know, free of that. And, and that's apparently what it's going to take. And Al Gore even said that it would take pain. We would have to be willing to take the pain because it's going to be a rebirth. And these people are nuts, I'm telling you right now. They are absolutely bonkers. Um, here's why it's a myth. And a lot of people don't understand this because they've just never been educated about this. You know, because like most people are victims of public education. Um, or, to be honest with you, it's, it's almost a cabal between public education and the left-wing media, which is the dominant media in the United States. Hardcore left-wing uh, ideologues. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is that here's the thing. This is the facts. And I kind of like to, to dwell with facts for just a little while. Dwell in a world of facts. The United States of America, via our tax money, all the taxpayers in, in the United States, for over three decades now, literally, for over three dec decades now, have poured untold amounts of money into green technology. The government of the United States has literally subsidized green technology for over three decades. Now, on every single level, on the academic level, on the, the research and development level, 
uh, we've, we've given grant after grant after grant after grant, research money out to Ying Yang to develop these, these new technologies. On the manufacturing level, all we have in the last 30 years dumped a untold amount there too. Uh, well, you know what? Cylinder's a perfect example. I mean, how many hundreds of millions of dollars did, did, did Cylinder get? You know, a half a billion dollars or something. That was one company of a lot of companies that got that kind of money. Of course, unfortunately, they're popping up everywhere, going bankrupt, and there's scandals and, you know, the usual government boondoggle. You know, and we've also subsidized on the, on the uh, uh, user end of it all. There have been lots of people who've gotten tax credits for putting solar panels up and, and doing this and that for, for green technology. Um, and we've been doing this for over 30 years. N at no time, at no time in the last 30 years, did we not uh, subsidize green technologies. So the myth that, that we, we've done nothing and we won't do anything until we completely outlaw coal or gas or oil is just that, a myth. It's, it's left-wing propaganda. And it's propaganda, to be honest with you, that's treasonous because it is hurting this country. There are a lot of people right now that really believe that nonsense. They really do. They believe in their minds that there's some kind of conspiracy amongst the corporatists, the, the, you know, the, the, the one percenters who own the coal, they own all the coal, they own all the oil, they own all the gas, and they like it that way. That's their power. And if they weren't in the way, then green technology would explode in this country and we'd all have free power because the sun is free. And I mean, just listen, people. It's hard not to be sarcastic about this because it's so insane. It just is. It's so insane. You know, and this is the this is the result of the indoctrination that's been going on for a very long time. You know, and it's really a shame. If you asked people, if I, I guarantee you, if you did a man on the street type of interview with people, just walked up to them and said, "Hey, uh, how much money is the is the taxpayer United States government put in, into renewables in the last thirty years?" Most people would tell you none, zero, zero. You know, and the truth of the matter is that it's the it's the polar opposite of that. And I don't mind that my taxpayer uh, money, I don't mind that my taxes is with the things like that. I really don't. Hey, listen, I'm pro-science. Now, having said that, the truth of the matter is, if we just cut all the bullshit out, Henry Ford didn't get all that stuff. But, I mean, there are people who claim he did. But let me tell you something. I live fairly close to Greenfield Village, and I've been up there to the, to the museum several times in my life. And if you go up there to Henry Ford's museum, you will see the, the, the first books that he used uh, in the Ford Motor Company. And you will notice one thing that's very interesting. In fact, they, they, they highlight it there on their tour, that he paid himself zero. Zero. He wasn't getting a whole bunch of money from the government like Cylinder did. You know, but the difference is this, <laughs> you know, when you have a technology that actually is better, uh, the, you know, the better of the technology. So, for example, in Henry Ford's day, the, the main transportation options were horse and buggy, horseback, mule, <laughs> jackass, or a locomotive. That was it. There were no planes, there were, there, were, there were no car, I mean, there were cars, but cars weren't the, the common, they weren't the main transportation. What made Henry Ford special is he, he developed a way, using the assembly line, to be able to make them affordable for the masses. And here's the thing, it was better to have a car than a horse, <laughs> you know, so what did people do? They bought cars, they wanted a Model T, they bought them in droves, because it was a better technology. The government didn't have to shoot all the horses. The government didn't have to ban buggies. You know, the government didn't have to derail the trains. You know, the, the better technology naturally took place. All right. So now let me give you an example. This is a solar flashlight. I embrace solar. I really do. I embrace it for what it is and for what it's good for. And hopefully in the future, maybe it can be a big player. Right now it's not, trust me on that. Um, this, this flashlight, I don't remember what I paid for it, but it's got two clicks. The first click is solar powered. Oh, whoop, there goes that. The second click is battery powered. Now I like this flashlight. It, if I would leave this out in the sun for a couple of days and let it get charged up, that first click, which now it's not coming on at all, um, would be a fairly bright flashlight. Not as bright as the battery backup, but you know, decent. I also embrace 
these rechargeable Duracell batteries. I love these things. They're more expensive than a traditional uh, Duracell battery. The, they don't last as long, um, but you know, they're, they're kind of neat, you, you know, and you, you put them in this little charger here, you, you flip this down, you plug it into the, the, to the outlet, it was just connected to the grid and it charges up. And you know, the greatest part about this is that these batteries here run on coal <laughs> because my electricity comes from a coal burning power plant. <laughs> you know? So, people, there is nothing preventing the development of, of green technology. It's just not ready for prime time. This flashlight here, which I like, will not replace this flashlight today. Maybe it replaces it tomorrow, maybe it replaces it next year, next decade, you know, or maybe never, okay? But I'm not going to ban this flashlight in order for us to embrace this flashlight. It doesn't make any sense to do that. You don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. You don't cut off your nose to spite your face. What this current administration, what the Barack uh, Obama administration is doing today, is throwing out the, the baby with the bathwater, is cutting off our nose to spite our faces. This block of coal here is important to this country. Unfortunately, what he's doing and what, what the Obama EPA is doing is, is killing this in order to make this work. And it's just not the way, it's just not logical. Common, common sense should tell you that that's insane. Here's the thing. Because of this, we were, we were able, sorry about that, Barack. Because of this, coal, oil, gas, we, we were able to become the greatest country in the world, literally. And unfortunately, because we've been overtaken by a bunch of environmental nut jobs that are not reasonable, not reasonable at all, we're going backwards. We're going to lose that number one spot. And let me tell you something, and for those of you who don't get it, it's a whole lot better being number one. It really is. <laughs> Most of the world may hate number one, you know, just like people hate the Yankees. But let me tell you something. You ask any one of the Yankees if they would have rather been a Dodger, <laughs> they're going to tell you hell no. You know, I mean, it's common sense, people. Why are, we, why are we castrating ourselves? Seriously, for what? Seriously, for what? You know, these myths have to stop. We need honest debate in this country. You know, Al Gore came out and said the debate is over. We never had a debate. That's part of the problem. It, all we had from them is indoctrination and, and environmental nut jobbiness. <laughs> you know, if you like that word, nut jobbiness. That's all we had. You know, and I can't stand the fact that people around here think, literally think, that the only reason that, 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 that this alternative energy isn't the answer is because of coal, of, is because of oil. You know, and then the reality of it is, we could literally get off of foreign oil if we would just embrace our own technology. Coal can be, can be turned into gas. It's called coal gasification. We can actually, the, the Nazis in World War II used to take coal and make oil and, and fuels from it. The technology actually is, is not new, it's old. We just have to embrace it, you know? I, I mean, we've got an ocean of natural gas. Why aren't we converting our, our transportation system over to use natural gas? It would make more sense from a standpoint of, of an energy policy to continue to use the abundant cheap energy coal to create electricity, use the abundant natural gas to power our automo automobiles, and, and quit sending our troops over to the Middle East to get killed. Doesn't that make more sense? But to the green people, no. You know, when they tell you that, that the solar panels and when they tell you that, that uh, windmills can replace this, they're lying to you. They are lying to you. And that's not indoctrination. That is fact. Fact. I don't have anything else to say about this. If you got any comments to make, make them in the, uh, in the comment section. Hopefully I helped uh, shed a little light on this and, and hopefully you all understand that we have a tremendous amount of money, taxpayer money, going into research and development and going into supporting alternative fuels. That has always been the case, has been the case for almost as long as I've been alive. Anyway, everybody take care.